maybe takes about 20 seconds to set up. Okay, so, so the YouTube side already um, uh, online. So let me first uh, um, briefly introduce our um, invited speaker today. So um, today we are very happy to have uh, Dr. Hai Hu Liu um, to, to introduce the multi-phase flow on using the LBM method. So P Professor Hai Hu Liu received his bachelor's and master's degrees in power engineering and engineering thermodynamics from Xi'an Univers Xi Jiaotong University in uh, 20, uh, in 2004 and 2007, respectively. Uh, he received his PhD in mechanical engineering from the University of uh, uh, Strathclyde in 2011. After that, he joined UIUC as a, a postdoc in the Department of Civil and Engineer Environment Engineering. In fall uh, 2013, he returned to the University of uh, Strathclyde as a lecturer in the Department of Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering until fall 2014, when he joined Xi'an Jiaotong University as an associate professor. So currently, um, Dr. Hai Hu Niu is a professor of engineering uh, of energy and power engineering in Xi'an Jiaotong University. His research focuses on understanding of uh, um, on understanding and predicting complex multi-phase flows in power media and in industry device using uh, different uh, numerical methods, including the not at Boltzmann method, the volume of fluid method, and also the discrete phase model. So uh, and Dr. Niu, you can start your um, presentation. Okay. Good morning, everyone. First, thanks uh, Dr. Lee for the introduction and uh, for the kind invitation. Yeah, I would like to thank Dr. Li for providing me such a good opportunity to present my work in the CFSM seminar series. Today, I would like to give a talk about the multi-phase uh, multi modeling and simulation of multi-phase flows using the large Boltzmann method. Uh, this talk includes four parts, best research background and the significance of multi-phase flow. Second, Jupiter manipulation mechanisms and uh, computational models, which include uh, thermal capillary flows, surfactants, non-Newtonian rheology, and uh, three-phase flows. Third, two-phase dis displacement in cross-media and uh, flow mechanisms. Finally, I will give congruence of this talk. Multi-phase flow can be found in nature and uh, different industry processes. Here, we list several examples. The first, his first example is the carbon sequestration. As we know, CO2 is a greenhouse gas and it can cause our global warming. A, prom a promising way to reduce the CO2 emission into the atmosphere is to capture the CO2 from power plant and then inject it into deep ceiling aquifer. When injecting the CO2 into deep ceiling aquifer, CO2 will displace the water when the injection process stops, the pressure in the aquifer is released. So water will in turn displace the CO2. In the long-term storage, the CO2 will rise due to the smaller density than water. During the rise of CO2, it will displace the water as well in order to predict the fate of CO2 in the injection and storage, we have to study the multi-phase flows in cross-media. 
The second example is enhanced oil recovery. Include oil extraction. We usually inject some water from the injection well to displace the oil, but most of the oil is still trapped among the rocks. Among the rocks. Due to the capital pressure, in order to enhance the oil recovery, we add some surfactants into the injection water. As we know, the, surf the surfactants prefer to absorb onto the oil and the water interface, which on one hand can reduce the interface tension between oil and water. And on the other hand, it can reduce the adhesive force between oil and the rock surface, which means that it will change the contact angle. Under these two effects, the oil recovery can be enhanced. The third example is the target drug delivery. Nowadays, scientists have invented some powerful drugs to treat cancer or cardiovascular disease. However, if these drugs are taken orally or intravenously into our human body, they will damage uh, other organs in the human body. A promising way is to wrap these drugs wrap these drugs using the bubbles and then in, induce them to the target location through ultrasound for drug release so that the, the disease can be treated on a site. The next example is engine spray and the combustion. In an engine, the size and the distribution of the fuel droplets ejected from the nozzle strongly affects the sub subsequent combustion process, which in turn affects the efficiency of the engine. The last example is the competition in centrifugal pumps. For a centrifugal pump working under of the off design condition, when the local pressure is lower than the saturated vapor pressure, the bubbles will be generated. When the bubble moves into high pressure, high pressure regimes, the bubble bursts, cre creating a very high, large, uh, a very high uh, hydraulic impact, which will induce uh, vibration and noise, and uh, even destroy the impeller. This is the impeller that damaged by competition. To optimize the industry process, as shown above, we have to study the multiphase flaws. However, the research of multiphase flaws is very complex, and the complexity includes, first, we have to consider the the interface deformation, breaking and merging. And then we have to consider the complex interaction, such as uh, the, interfa the interface tension between two different fluids and the contact angles between fluid and the surface. And also the, we have to consider the coupling with like a temperature, surfactants, electric field, and acoustics. Third, uh, the we the fish the fish changes, change such as the vibration and uh, condensation may be involved sometimes. Here we focus on the numerical modeling and simulation of multiphase flow. Traditionally, uh, the multiphase flow can be simulated by the front tracking method, VF method, volume fluid method, level state method, and the phase field method. However, the front tracking method is not able to simulate the interface breaking and the merging. The volume fluid method needs very complex interface reconstruction, which is usually um, of the first order accuracy. The left set method can't conserve the mass of the system, and it needs unphysical re in initialization process to correct the left set function. Uh, the phase field method 
suffers from the unfiscal dissolution of small droplets or bubbles, and it remains a big challenge to select an appropriate mobility in the Kahneman equation. By contrast, the microscopic Lati Boltzmann method is of great pleasure to study the multiphase flow, and its advantages include simple boundary treatment, easy parallelization, and high parallelization efficiency. No need for interface tracking and reconstruction, easy modeling of fluid surface interaction, and good numeric stability, especially for small droplets or bubbles. So we will use the large Boltzmann method for multiphase flow simulation. In particular, the color gradient model will be used. In this slide, I will talk about the thermal capillary manipulation of droplets and the uh, uh, numeric model. What is the thermal capillary flow? Thermal capillary flow also known as the thermal capillary convection. It is the flow that is driven by the gradient of interface tension induced by the temperature gradient on the interface. See? This is because the interface tension is usually a function of temperature. In the microfluidics, the sum recovery flow is often induced by embedding microheaters, microheaters like here on substrate, which can cause difficulties in design and the fabrications of microchips. In 2007, Broad et al. found that the, the summary coupling flow can be induced by localized uh, laser heating. In the experiment, they use a cross junction to, gen to generate uh, the droplets. When the laser is off, like here, when the laser is off, they found that the injected, uh, the generated droplet is very small. When we we turn on the laser, they induce the thermal coupling flow will block the interface motion. So the generated droplet is bigger, like here. Inspired by this work, we will develop a large Boltzmann method for the simulation of some coupling flow. As we know, in traditional safety method, uh, the multiphase flow is simulated by solving the Navier-Stokes equations and uh, an interface uh, evolution equation, which is either a pure uh, convection equation in in the value of fluid method and uh, uh, level set level set method, or uh, the Kahneman equation in the phase field method. We need to do discretization in both time and space, and the solution variables are density, uh, density, velocity, pressure, and uh, the phase uh, index. Fine. In our summary coupling flow method. Uh, we use the color gradient uh, model, color gradient large Boltzmann model for the flow field. We need to do discretization in time, space, and the velocity space. And the solution uh, variables are the particle distribution functions. In the color gradient model, we have two distribution functions. One is for the red fluid, and the other is for the blue fluid. Each distribution function undergoes collision, collision and uh, propagation steps. The collision step includes three sub steps: uh, beach key collision step, the perturbation step, and the recurrent step. In the perturbation step. We use the body force term, the body force term, uh, the body force model developed by uh, Guo Zhao Li. Here, the FS is the interface force, which includes uh, the interface tension force and the Margoni stress. The Margoni stress arises from 
the interface tension gradient caused by the temperature gradient at the interface. The bench key collision step and the perturbation step are to produce the navy stokes equation in the traditional safety method. Where the recurrent step is to produce the interface evolution equation, in the current, current gradient model, we use the current function rho m to distinguish different fluids. In addition, um, passive scalar uh, LBM is used to solve the temperature. H, here, hi is a di di distribution function for the temperature, and uh, this is the uh, lattice Boltzmann equation, which can lead to the macroscopic uh, equation like this, this gamma equation. Here, the QT is to model the laser heating source, and the K is the summer, uh, summer conductivity. On the solid wall, we impose two boundary conditions. One is non slip boundary condition, which is to achieve by using the half wave bounce back, and the other is the waiting boundary condition, which is, is, is imposed using the geo, geometric formulation like this, like this. Here, theta, theta. Here, theta is the is the contact angle. We do the discretization of this equation, of this equation at the solid wall and this solid wall. Um, represented by the dashed line, which is located halfway between these two nodes, these two nodes. We use the central difference, central difference for the discretization of the normal derivative for this, this normal derivative. But uh, the explanation uh, for the tangent Tangential derivatives means this step, means this step. In this way, we can get the row n values at uh, y equals to one uh, to zero. The, the row n the row n values at uh, y equals zero will be used to compute the gradient of row n at y equals to one so that the waiting boundary condition is imposed. Now we use the developed model to check whether or not the summer capital flow induced by the laser heating can multiply the droplet motion as shown in this figure. The left boundary, the left boundary is the velocity inlet and the right boundary is the pressure outlet. We initially place a circular drop it near the inlet. If we don't apply the heat, laser heating source, the drop it will move out of the microchannel from the right outlet, means from the this outlet. When we applied a heating source at x equal 200, we can find that the drop it will finally stop Stopped at the lazy uh, at the lazy point, and uh, at the same time, four watches uh, are disputed are disputed around the lazy uh, point, where two watches are disputed inside the droplet and uh, two outside. The result is consistent with the experimental observations by Broad. By Broad, this this is the experimental results. This this indicates that the thermal capital flow induced by the laser heating can block the droplet motion. In this case, the droplet uh, doesn't touch uh, with the solid walls. So next, we consider the thermal capital motion of a water droplet on a substrate. This is the computational domain. Our water droplet is initially placed at x equals 400 on the substrate. 
we assume a linear distribution of temperature with high temperature at the left end and the lower temperature at the right end. We can find that for the hydrophilic surface, the water droplet will move from warm to cold end. But for the hydrophobic surface, the water droplet moves from cold to warm end. These results are consistent with the experiment, uh, experimental results of Song et al. Clarifying the wrong results of Yuan and Chen, who found that the droplet moves from warm to cold and regardless of the kinetic angles. Actually, we can make a theoretic analysis on how the droplet moving direction depends on the kinetic angle. First, the driving force pointed to the right can be approximated like this, like this. Here, R represents, R represents the right end of the droplet and R represents the left end of the droplet. Experiment, experiments have found that the contact, ang uh, the contact angle has the research can be ignored for the present problem. So we, ha we have theta R equals theta R equals theta. Then the driving force to the right can be expressed like this. Because the left temperature is higher than the right temperature and the interface tension decreases with the temperature, we can get the right interface tension sigma r minus sigma l, the, uh, my, minus the, interface, uh, the left interface tension sigma l is bigger than zero. So for the hydro, hydro, hydrophilic, uh, hydrophilic surface, because uh, because the contact angle is positive, so the driving force to the right is hydro. Uh, uh, the, the driving force to the right is positive, and the water droplet moves from the left to the right. But for the hydrophobic surface, cosine theta is negative, so the driving force to the right is negative, and the water droplet moves from right to the uh, to the left. In this slide. We talk about the interface, interfacial flaw with surfactance and uh, numeric model. Surfactance is an amphilic, amphilic uh, substance. It has a hydrophilic hair and a hydrophobic hair. When we add some surfactants into the oil and water system, the surfactants will be absorbed onto the oil and uh, water surface, which will reduce the interface tension between oil and water. The reduction of, of interface tension with surfactant concentration can be described by the long mu equation of state. Here, sigma is, sigma is the interface tension, and the psi is the surfactant concentration. According to the work of Tegan, according to this work. The surfactant transport equation is given like this. That here, the delta gamma is a delta function, which is taken, is taken as uh, the normal of the rho n gradient divided by two. Uh, substitution of the delta function, we can get the gamma equation of the surfactant concentration, like this. We use the final different methods to solve this equation. And they use the color gradient uh, lattice Boltzmann model to solve the immiscible two-phase flaws, in which the interface force include the capillary force and the Marconi stress. The Marconi here, the Marconi stress is caused by the interface tension, uh, uh, by the interface tension gradient due to the surfactant concentration gradient. The final, final difference method and the current gradient 
uh, Latin Boltzmann model are coupled by the equation of states like this, like this. In this equation of states, we have considered the critical micellar concentration. When the, when the surfactant concentration is greater than the critical micellar concentration, the interface tension remains a minimal value, sigma minima. When the surfactant concentration is lower than the critical micellar concentration, the Lommel equation of state is used to describe the variation of interface tension with surfactant concentration. In the final difference method, the modified correct Nixon scheme is used for the time discretization of the surfactant uh, transport equation. For the resulting, for the, sorry. For the resulting equation, the central difference scheme is used for the diffusion time. The set order we know approximation is used for the convection times. In order to speed up the simulation, the successive over, over relaxation method is used. Then we use the, the Latin Bertman and the final difference hybrid method to simulate the effects of surfactants on the droplet deformation and brick crop in a simple shear flow. Uh, a sulfuric droplet is initially placed in the center of the computational domain. The top wall is moving to the right, uh, to the left, with a constant velocity u w, where the bottom wall is moving to the right with u w as well. The dimensionless numbers characterize the droplet behavior include the, the initial surfactant concentration, Reynolds number, Caprio number, and the, the Pickering number. The Pickering number, the Pickering number represents the ratio of, of surfactant convection to diffusion. As we know, the presence of surfactant reduce the interface tension and uh, thus uh, increase the droplet deformation in order to remove the effect of average surfactant concentration on the increase of droplet uh, deformation. We sometimes introduce the effective coupling number instead of the standard uh, coupling number. This figure shows the comparison between the clean the clean droplet and the surfactant laden droplet at the carbon number of <coughs> 0 0.24 and the range number of 0 0.1, we can see that both droplets can finally reach the steady state. But the surfactant laden droplet has a big deformation. The surfactant laden droplet has a big deformation. This means that the presence of surfactants can enhance the droplet deformation. In the presence of surfactants, the increase of droplet deformation is, the, uh, is attributed to two factors. That's one, which is due to the reduction of interface tension caused by the average surfactant concentration and uh, delta two, which is due to the effects of non-uniform non capital force and the Margoni stress. It is clear that the delta one here, like sh as shown in this figure, the delta one has a big contribution, delta two, but the delta two first increase and then decrease with the capital number. The first in, uh, increase is because more surfactants are swept to the droplet tips with the increase of carbon number. And uh, thus, the surfactants become more non-uniform at the interface. 
However, when the current number exceed, exceeds a critical value, the drop in the deformation rapidly increase with the carbon number. So the surfactant dilution be, becomes uh, increasingly significant and the non-uniform effects will decrease. As a result, the delta two decrease with the carbon number. With increasing the carbon number to 0.35, we find that the clean, the clean drop it finally reached a, uh, a set state, but the surfactant latent drop it breaks into two parts, uh, known as the binary breakup. This means that the presence of surfactants promotes the drop in the breakup. When we increase the risk number to one, we find that the clean drop it undergoes binary breakup, but the surfactant latent drop it undergoes binary breakup. This means that the presence of surfactants can modify the model of drop in breakup. We also study the the surfactant uh, the surfactant uh, laden drop it on a uh, surface on the shelf floor. The bottom wall is stationary, where the top wall moves to the right with a constant velocity u w. Initially, um, hemispheric drop it is located at this position. The drop it behavior can be described by the by, by the initial surfactant coverage, Reynolds number, Pickering number, and the effective copy number, we still use the long mu equation of state to describe to describe the dependence of interface tension on the local surfactant concentration. We first consider low carbon numbers. We find that for each couple number, the presence of surfactants increase, increase the dead state droplet deformation. This because on the action of shear flow, the surfactant will be will be swept will be will be swept to the right tip of the droplet, leading to the reduction of the local interface tension. Since the interface tension resist against the drop in deformation, the lower interface tension at the right tip will lead to a big drop in deformation. In addition to the drop in deformation, we find that the presence of surfactants also influence the drop in motion at the bottom wall. Here we introduce the, the contact line cap number to characterize the drop in motion. And here, here, UCL is the contact line velocity. It is seen that in either clean, in either clean droplet or surfactant laden droplet, the contact line Coupling number linearly increase with the effective coupling number, but the slope is higher in the uh, in the surfactant laden laden system. According to the definition of the contact uh, contact line coupling number and the effective coupling number means here the contact line coupling number and the effective coupling number. The slope. In this figure, the slope in this figure equals twice the ratio of the drop drop in the moving velocity divided di, divided by the by the wall moving velocity u w. A higher slope means a bigger drop in the moving velocity, which Induce, uh, which indicates that uh, the presence of surfactant can promote the drop in motion. As we know, for the bubble rise problem, the presence of surfactant will retard the the bubble bubble rise the bubble rise. But uh, in the, the present study, we find that the presence of surfactant 
promotes the Jupiter motion, what causes the difference? Let's have an analysis. When the bubble rises upward, the surfactant, surfactant will swipe to the bottom of the bubble, leading to the, uh, the Margoni flow in this direction, uh, represented by the dashed uh, line, by the dashed line. In order to balance the Margoni flow, an additional viscous flow will be induced, which is directed uh, downward. On the inference of additional viscous flow, the bubble uh, motion will be retarded, retarded. In the present problem, the surfactants will be swept to the right, to the right here, leading to a Margoni flow in this direction. Yeah, also showed uh, by the dashed line. In order to balance the Margoni flow, an additional viscous flow will be induced, which is directed to the right. To the right. The viscous flow is obviously the, uh, the viscous flow is in the same direction as the drop the moving direction. So the drop the motion is promoted. As the carbon number is further increased, the drop the wave breakup. The lowest uh, carbon number for the drop the breakup is called as the uh, critical carbon number. This figure plots the critical carbon number as a function of the viscous ratio in a clean system, where the viscous, viscous ratio is the ratio of drop the uh, viscosity to the matrix viscosity. It is clear that uh, the critical carbon number first decrease and then increase with the viscous ratio. And the lowest uh, cr critical carbon number occurs at the viscous ratio of one. When the viscous ratio is less than one, uh, the tenor breakup occurs. But when the viscous ratio is bigger than one, the binary breakup occurs. In a surfactant laden system, the critical carbon number first decrease and then increase with the viscous ratio, like in the cleaning system. However, the lowest critical carbon number occurs at the viscous ratio of 0.5. When the viscous ratio is less than 0.5, binary breakup occurs, but when the viscous, viscous ratio is bigger than 0.5, the binary breakup occurs. In addition, we find that at uh, at what at at the lowest viscous ratio, we have considered the tip streaming occurs. This because the the fact that the concentration is very high, even exceeding the uh, critical mycelium concentration, which leads to very low interface tension, and thus the the formation of very small droplets. This is for the first time to have observed the tip streaming through uh, numeric simulations. Finally, we put the results of clean droplets and the, and the surfactant latent droplets together, and we can clearly see the effect of surfactant from uh, the comparison. It is clear that for all the viscous ratios, the presence of surfactant always decreases the critical carbon number of droplet breakup, and the effect of surfactant is more pronounced at, at, at low viscous ratios. We also show the influence of surfactants on the droplet closeness. These two videos. show the collisions of two equal-sized droplets in a shear flow. The left one are the, uh, correspond to the cleaning system, where the right one correspond to the surfactant laser system. We can see that in the cleaning system, the two droplets were merged together, but in the surfactant laser system, the two droplets were separate, finally. This uh, suggests that the presence of surfactant prevents the droplet crosses. Therefore, in the microfluidic applications, we often add surfactants to stabilize the droplets against crosses. 
Next, we talk about the, oh, sorry, oh, wrong, wrong. We talk about the two phase flows with, with power law, non-Newtonian non rheology for a power law fluid. This is a constitutive equation. Here, the gamma, gamma is the shear rate tensor, and it can be locally calculated by this equation in the lattice method. The dynamical viscosity can be calculated by this equation. Here, n is a power law index. When n is smaller than one, the power law fluid is the shear thinning fluid. When n is greater than, than one, it means the power law fluid is the shear thickening fluid. When n is one, it means the power fluid is a Newtonian fluid. For the Newtonian droplet deformation in power law matrix, we find that the droplet deformation is larger, is larger for larger power law index n. And for a fixed power law index, the deformation parameter in, uh, linearly increase with the coupling number. This figure shows the critical cup number of the droplet breakup as a function of the confinement ratio in a Newtonian system. The confinement ratio is defined as a ratio of the ratio of the droplet diameter to the wall distance edge. We can see that the, the critical cup number first decrease and then increase with the confinement ratio. With the lowest critical cap number occurring at the confinement ratio of 0 0.5. Uh, 0.5. We also notice that our simulation results match well with the simulation results of boundary integral method. And our simulation results are close are closer to the experiment results at the lower and the lower lower confinement ratios compare compared to the results of boundary integral method. This figure shows the critical common number of the droplet breakup as a function of the confinement ratio in three different power law matrix fluids. We can see that in the shear uh, thin matrix, the critical carbon number shows an increase in trend with the confinement ratio. In the Newtonian matrix, the critical carbon number first decrease and then increase with the confinement ratio. In the shear thickening matrix, the critical carbon number shows a decreasing trend with the increase of confinement ratio. For a fixed uh, confinement ratio, the critical carbon number is the highest for the shear thinning fluid, matrix fluid, and the lowest for the for the shear thickening fluid. In addition, the ternary, the ternary breakup occurs at the high confinement ratios at any system. These three videos uh, correspond to three different matrix fluids. The first one is the shear thinning fluid, and the second one is the Newtonian fluid, and the last one is the shear thickening fluid. In the shear thinning fluid, no breakup is observed. Is observed. In the Newtonian fluid, binary breakup is observed, and in the shear thickening fluid, ternary breakup is observed. The difference shows that the non-Newtonian rheology can modify the Model of the model of the droplet breakup as well. Next, uh, I talk about the three phase flow model and dynamics of compound droplet. Our color gradient LBM for three phase flow is developed, which is suitable for a full range of interface tensions. In this model. 
and interface force for M phase flow is proposed using is derived using the Chapman S core expansion when which is then incorporated using the body force model of Gore eight. In addition, a new recurring operator is proposed by considering the existence of of Newman's triangle and the relationship between the interface thickness and the and the contact angle when the new mass and uh, triangle exist. Using this model, we for the first time reproduce seven uh, stable structures of double droplets. This figure shows that the compression between our simulation results and the results from the previous model for two critical states, casing state, this two are casing state, these two are the critical uh, engulfing state. A and C are our simulation results. B and D are the results from the previous model. It is seen that the, our, our model can correctly simulate the critical state where the previous model produced incorrect results. For a compound drop it in a uh, in a sample shear flow, we can get different kinds of droplet morphology by changing the interface tension ratio. For this two, for this two, for the first two interface tension ratio, the red fluid acts as a wetting film on the green droplet surface. For this and these two interface tension ratios, the red and the green droplet separate and the Red drop it breaks into two parts. For for those for those two uh, in the face tension ratios, the red and the green drop it exhibit uh, engulfing state. For this uh, for for this for this in the face tension ratio, the green drop it. Undergoes binary breakup where the red droplet uh, undergoes the tender breakup. Next, we use the three phase flow model to study a compound droplet on the oscillating shear flow. Oscillating shear flow. This is a computational domain. Initially, a compound droplet is in the center of the domain, in the x, in the x, and uh, Y directions, we use the periodic boundary conditions on the top and the bottom walls, we use the velocity boundary conditions. The wall velocity is like this, which changes with the time, T is the time. So an oscillating shear flow can be produced. This is the domain size, this is the domain size. In order to quantify the droplet deformation and the rotation, we introduce the de deformation parameters and the inclination angles of inner and the outer droplets. This video shows the simulation results at the current number of 0.25. It is seen that the drop uh, the droplet deformation. Uh, the, the deformation and the rotation of the inner and outer droplets are not uh, are, are, are not uh, uh, synchronous. Uh, synchro, uh, synchro For example, when the outer droplet inclines, inclines to the right, the inner droplet inclines to the left, this result seems uh, no intuitive because we think that the dynamic behavior of the inner droplets is governed by the uh, viscous force arising from the uh, closed vortex flow inside the outer droplet. So what causes this uh, non-intuitive behavior? This is because when the outer droplet deforms, the pressures, the pressure are highest in this 
these two two areas due to the higher Laplace uh, Laplace higher Laplace pressure under the uh, pressure gradient it will cause a pressure gradient under the pressure gradient the inner drop is will incline to the left therefore we can conclude that within one steady state oscillating period the dynamic behavior of the inner drop it is mainly governed by the viscous force arising from the uh, closed vertical flow inside the outer drop it, but it's also affected by the pressure uh, distribution inside the outer drop it during the reversal of shear flow. When the coupler number is increased to uh, this value, point. 4625, this value. We find that the inner drop heat deformation undergoes multi-peaked, multi-peaked oscillation, uh, oscillation, oscillations. One peak occurs when the outer drop heat is stretched, like here, stretched. And the other peak occurs When the out drop it shrinks, like here, like here. In this part, we study the um, the double emotion formation in flow focusing mic channels. First, we have successfully reproduced several typical formation regimes observed in previous experiments and the simulations, such as the two-step formation, one-step formation, uh, the decussit regime with one empty uh, drop it, decussit regime with two empty drop it. By adjusting the three different inlet, uh, coupling numbers, we have established our three dimension phase diagram. In this phase diagram, we have obtained 11 different uh, regimes of drop deformation. Finally, we talk about uh, two phase displacement in cross media and uh, flow regimes. A new algorithm for imposing contact angle on Arbitrarily, arbitrarily complex surface is proposed in the curry gradient Latin Boltzmann model. In this algorithm, first we divided the lattice nodes into two types. One is fluid nodes and the other is solid nodes. If the fluid nodes has at least one link with the solid nodes, uh, solid surface, uh, the fluid node is denoted as the boundary fluid node. If the solid, if the solid node has at least one link with the uh, solid surface, the solid node is denoted as the boundary solid node. Second, the row n value at the boundary fluid node is obtained through a weighted average of its nearest row n at uh, at the uh, at the boundary story the nose like here second if the row n value at the boundary fluid nose if we get the if we if we get the row n at the boundary uh, boundary, boundary solid node. We can calculate the current gradient at the boundary fluid node, which is denoted as the predicted current gradient. Like here, shows uh, the nabla, uh, the nabla uh, row n star. And then the interface normal vector is obtained, n star. Which 
which is understood as an estimate of the interface normal vector. Then we compute the possible uh, theoretical interface normal vector. Then we choose an appropriate, appropriate interface normal vector by this equation. Finally, we, got, we update the current gradient at the boundary fluid nodes by keeping the predicted norm unchanged. Then we introduce the coupled wave effect. What is the coupled wave effect? In order to understand the coupled wave effect, we consider a single uh, pole and through structure. According to the young Laplace equation, the pressure difference between the invading fluid and the displaced fluid is given by this equation, by this equation, because the interface tension is a constant, is sigma is constant. So the pressure difference is only de is determined by the interface curvature, like the, uh, the, 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 the curvature radius R. We first consider the drainage process, the left-hand side. On the left-hand side, which means that we inject the non magnetic fluid from the throat to the pore. When the interface moves in the throat, the curvature radius is given by the advancing uh, contact angle and uh, theta, uh, the advancing contact angle theta A and uh, the throat with W. When the interface moves to the corner point, like here, moves to the corner point, the contact line will not move because the interface culture uh, uh, but, uh, but meanwhile, the, the interface culture will change. When the interface becomes like this, like here, like here, like this, the, the culture radius reaches the, reach the minimal value. Here, the R equals one half of the throat width. After this, the culture radius will increase. After, after the point of the theta equals to theta A, the contact line starts to move again. So during the drainage process, the minimal radius is one half of the throat width, and the corresponding pressure difference is, uh, is, is, is this value. Is this value. This value is called as the threshold pressure in the drainage or the coupled wave pressure in the drainage. Then we consider the imbibition uh, process, which means that we inject uh, the wetting fluid from the throat to the pore. Again, when the interface moves to the corner point, the contact line will not move, but uh, the interface capture will change. At this point, the interface capture is at this point, the interface capture is negative. And uh, at uh, this point, like uh, almost at this point, at this point, the capture, the capture, the capture, the interface capture is zero. So there's no pressure difference between the in, inlet and out, outlet. When the interface become like this, become like this, the, 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 the capture radius will become like this value, like, like this value. After this, uh, the, the connect line will move and uh, and the interface radius will increase, so the pressure will decrease as well. So during the imbibition process, the, the threshold pressure will be 
like this will be given by this value, by this value. This value was also called the copper wave uh, pressure, copper wave pressure in the in the in the inhibition process. Then we simulate the drainage and the inhibition in a micro model. This figure shows the comparison between our simulation results and the experimental results. The left half is the drainage results and the right half is the inhibition results. The color result, uh, the color of the results correspond to our simulation and the gray results correspond to the experiment. We can see that our simulation results match well with the experiment, but there are some difference. At second, at second, in this figure, like here, like here, in the experiment, the non-wet fluid can enter the two throat, but not in our simulation. Here, here is the theme. The non-wet fluid can enter two throats in the experiment, but not in our simulation. What caused the difference? To clarify the cause of the difference, we show the animation of the drainage process. Clearly, the non-wet fluid has ever entered the lateral throat, but retreats from the throat when invading other pore and the throat. Why the non-wet fluid retreats from the throat in our simulation? Because the wall surface is assumed to be ideal, ideally smooth in our simulations, where in the experiment, the wall surface is not ideally smooth due to microfabrication limitation, where the contact angle has the races, uh, should exist. Then we analyze how to prevent the non-wedge fluid retreating from uh, the throat. As we know, when the inlet pressure is higher, the non-wedge fluid is harder to retreat. In order to avoid the, the retreating event, we have to ensure that the non-wedge fluid doesn't retreat when the inlet pressure is the lowest. So we monitor the, the lowest inlet pressure during the dis, dis, displacement. Through the theoretical analysis, we can obtain the, the inlet pressure is the lowest when the non-wet fluid enters the throat C. The lowest the inlet pressure is this value here. In order to avoid the retreating event, the lowest uh, inlet pressure should be greater than the uh, receding capillary pressure. So from this uh, equation, we can get the receding contact angle should be greater than uh, 8.9 degrees. Therefore, we introduce the contact angle hysteresis in the model and use the receding contact angle of 81 degrees. The new results are shown in this figure. Clearly, our simulation results now match perfectly with the experiment results. Then we consider the two-phase displacement in a dual permeability dual permeability pore network. This is a dual permeability pore network, which includes a higher a high permeability zone and the lower permeability zone. Both permeability zones have equal porosity, but different permeabilities. Initially, the pore network is saturated with one fluid, and uh, the other fluid is injected from the left inlet. First, we consider 
the drainage process. This means that we inject the non-wet fluid to displace the wet fluid. The two videos show the displacement process at the low um, coverage number and uh, at high coverage number. We can see that at a low coverage number, the non-wet fluid only enters the high permeability zone. And uh, at a high coverage number, the non-wet fluid can enter both high and uh, low permeability zones. At any coupling number, the non-wide fluid prefers to enter the high permeability zone in the drainage process. This figure shows the comparison between our simulation results and the experiment results. It is clear that our simulation, our LBM simulation can capture the essential fluid physics in the drainage experiment. As shown above, in the drainage, the displacement fluid prefers to enter the high permeability zone at any couple numbers. How about the results in the inhibition process? We find that at low coupling number, the displacement fluid prefers to enter the low permeability zone, like here. But at the high coupling number, the displacement fluid prefers to enter the high permeability zone. So, they should exist a critical common number. Like here, at which the same amount of displacement fluid, uh, the same amount of displacement fluid will enter the high permeability zone and the low permeability zone. Like uh, show, like shown in this figure, the critical common number lies in between these two. Uh, couple numbers. To understand the preferential inhibition in the dual permeability bond network, we consider a simplified dual permeability geometry. We call it poor doublet. We can analyze the inhibition process in the poor doublet. According to the hagen posley law, we can get the two equations. One is the pressure difference between A and B obtained from this branch. And also we can also we can get the pressure difference between A and B from this branch, this branch. Like in these two equations, the fourth term is a viscous pressure drop. And the last term is a cap capillary pressure drop. These two, because these two equations uh, should be equal, so we can get the equation three. As we know, the inlet flow rate is equal, so we, we have this equation, uh, means equation four, this equation. When all the waiting fluid enter, one branch, we have this velocity, we have this velocity. So the velocity should satisfy this constraint. Introducing these three scaling parameters, we can normalize the above equations. So we can get the following equations. We can see that the inhibition process can be analytically described by two dimensionless numbers. Um, one is the viscosity ratio, and uh, the other is uh, uh, the, the carbon number. This is the new carbon number, which have involved the, the geometric informations, like L and uh, R1. These two equations, these two equations, can be solved numerically using the MATLAB software. Then we obtain the critical cap numbers at the different viscosity ratios. Clearly, at the low uh, viscosity ratios, the critical cap number is roughly a constant, like here. At the low uh, viscosity ratios, uh, yeah, the critical cap number is a constant. And uh, at the high cap numbers, the critical cap number is pr proportional to the inverse of the 
the viscous region. Uh, from the large plasma simulations, we can get the <coughs> critical coupling number curves in the dual permeability point network. We surprising we we surprisingly find that the critical coupling number curves obtained from the poor doublet and from the poor network are collapsed onto a single line. Yeah, the two curves are collapsed onto a single. Uh, single curve. In addition, we can find that the transient saturation curve much well in both geometries, especially at uh, high uh, coupling numbers. Like this is high coupling numbers, the right hand side are the <coughs> high coupling numbers. This is understandable because at uh, low coupling numbers, uh, the interfacial tension is important. So the local geometry take a bigger effect than at uh, high coupling numbers. Uh, finally, uh, this is my conclusion. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Niu. This is a lot of very impressive work. So uh, we, we actually, uh, just now we have uh, many LVM experts in the, in the in Zoom. Somebody I can tell is uh, uh, Peter just and James is from Hamburg, uh, Germany, but he left at 10 o'clock, maybe have other <laughs> schedule. And also a Wolf Schiener from the University of Dunaware, he's also there and left at 10 o'clock, maybe, uh, just other schedule, but uh, uh, it's very impressive and uh, attract a lot of uh, LBM uh, researchers from all around the world. So any question from our audience? So if you, you have a question and to Dr. New, you can uh, unmute yourself and you ask directly. We currently, we also have seven people on the YouTube side, but they cannot ask a question. So if they have a question, you can you can later contact Dr. New directly. Maybe I can start my uh, my question is uh, um the, the the simulation when you do the power law of fluid that continue the the long long Newtonian uh, behavior very interesting and uh, actually affect the the results significantly. I just wondering when you consider the power law of fluid, this is only a pure viscous fluid. Um, I'm wondering, have you considered to introduce the viscoelastic uh, fluid model to, to consider the elastic um, feature of the non newtonian fluid? Yeah, thank you, thank you for the uh, yeah questions. Yeah, uh, actually, yeah, in this uh, presentation, I didn't show <laughs> the 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 work related to the uh, viscoelastic. Yeah, fluid. Yeah, actually, we have done this kind of um, non Newtonian fluid in our uh, recent work. Yeah, but uh, I didn't show here. Okay. Uh, yeah. So this, this, uh, the introduced the elasticity can also significantly change the behavior of the, of the uh, drop nets. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah definitely. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, so there's many, many uh, uh, three-phase uh, or two-phase fluid. I, I'm wondering, when you consider the, 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 the gas and the liquid phase, so typically what's the density ratio you are using in, in the simulation? Uh, in all my simulation, we just use the density ratio of one. <laughs> one. One. Means, one. The... Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so it's, very, what... it's very simple. Yeah. Okay. What what's the what's the challenge if you increase to ten hundred? So there's a numerical stability issue. Uh, no, actually, in my also in my recent work, we did a lot of work. Yeah, related uh related to high density ratio. Yeah. Uh, but if if we want to submit the high density ratio, we we must. Uh, Add more times in the large plasma equations. Uh, yeah, this is actually because we usually consider 
mm, the stocks flow, the stocks flow. So I think that uh, in my previous work, uh, the density ratio didn't uh, play uh, didn't play uh, an important role. So 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 we 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 didn't consider the the, the density ratio effect. Okay. Okay. So actually, I have for um, um but uh, more question, but I I want to give this opportunity to our audience. Any any uh question from our audience? I have a question. Can I ask, Professor? Sure, Lee? sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm a PhD student student from Tsinghua University. I am curious about the uh. uh is the spurious current uh, problem in your simulation? I mean, I always encounter this problem because I find the velocity field, uh, uh, you really fluctuate. Uh, so I wonder whether in your simulation is the spurious current uh, problem to tackle with. Uh, in my model, actually, we have uh, minimize the severe currents because uh, yeah we use uh, my our uh, my boundary treatment yeah is 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 better than the, the existing uh, boundary treatment so in my model the the severe currents actually are very are very small So that's why I choose uh, I choose a, choose the our model to simulate the 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 uh, the, the multi-phase flow in pros media. Otherwise, if the spirit currents are quite high, we can't use it to simulate the the, the pros media flow. Because usually in the pros media flow, the 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 uh, f uh, the fluid velocity is very small. Yeah, I think maybe you you can you can uh, contact the doctor who uh, Doctor New uh, later uh, send by send him one email uh, email and he will he, he maybe can refer you to some some paper or literature you can you can look into the 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 method how to get better treatment on the boundary and maybe you can solve this uh, the, 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 the fluctuation flow field problem. Yeah, currently our boundary treatment uh, method have been used uh, by a lot of scholars in the world, actually. Yeah, because it's, it can, can cause very small uh, spurious currents. So is there any, any GitHub uh, open source code have this uh, boundary treatment method the student can 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 take advantage or they can look into how the boundary <laughs> uh, uh, if, yeah if they want yeah yeah actually uh, you miss uh, they want some sample code to to learn this the, the actually, boundary yeah the boundary method or the boundary treatment yeah if they really want i can share yeah yeah, yeah, it's uh, very, 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 but, very uh, yeah, but they have to respect my. <laughs> sure, 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 definitely. My, uh, yeah, yeah, my knowledge. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Professor Liu. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, any other question? Okay, if not, uh, we were ending here and uh, today, and uh, uh, I very appreciate Doctor New to share a lot of good work. And if we, as I mentioned, if our audience have uh, uh, questions, you can, um, further question, you can contact Doc New directly by email. Okay, then we will end here. Thank you. Okay. Okay, thank you, Dr. Lee. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>